adventure. It's a calling, really. Some people climb mountains. Some people jump out of airplanes. Me, I'm learning how to ride adventure motorcycles. It all started earlier this year when I took a test drive on the BMW R1200GS. Now this is an activity that without the proper training, you can bang yourself up pretty good. Not to mention the bike itself. These bikes take really big hits. So I've asked around, I've been referred to the best of the best. His name is Kurt Forget, and he and his wife have started Black Dog Cycle Works. He's agreed to build my bike out properly and protect it from the rigors of extreme motorcycle adventure. The way Kurt puts it, it's body armor for your bike. Kurt and I have known each other for quite some time now, but we have yet to do an adventure together. Well, that wait ends now. My name's Brad Barker, and I don't have a regular nine to five job. About seven years ago, I started a company called the Halo Corporation. The Halo Corporation just completed the largest multi-jurisdictional counter-terrorism summit right here in San Diego. So after the summit, I was left thinking, where's all the good news? So I made a commitment to myself, I'm gonna find it. I've got an amazing network, I've got an amazing support group, and now I've got the support of BMW Motorcycles of Munich and BMW Motorcycles of San Diego, and they've outfitted me with the tools to support my quest. And I've chosen the BMW GS1200 as my vehicle. I'm going on this ride to prove that the heart of history's greatest explorers and adventurers is alive and well today. Join me on the ride of my life. My journey begins here in Sandpoint, Idaho. I sat down with Kurt and Martha because I wanted to hear how Black Dog got started. So life before Black Dog, when I moved out to San Francisco, um, where Martha was, the agreement was, you know, I was going to buy a bike as soon as I sold one of our cars. Because it's ridiculous to have two cars in San Francisco. We each had a car. So he sells that, and he looks at me and says, so, okay, now can I get the bike? And I looked at him and I said, don't you think you ought to have a job? He was not happy with that one. So then he, seriously, he gets the job on Wednesday. On Friday, he's at the BMW dealership buying his motorcycle. What bike was it? It was a K1100 RS. Were you doing a ton of riding? Oh, yeah. I mean, she couldn't figure out why every weekend I wanted to go ride. And we lived right in San Francisco. Route 1 was right. 10 minutes away. So about my fourth bike <laughs> after the BMW, the first BMW, I went for the GS. And at that point, what year are we? We are in, it's 1999. And GS is the only game in town for dual sports of that size. Yeah, I mean, you get like a KLR 650. But that was it. Those were kind of the two options. Right. So I rode all over California on that bike, up to Oregon, and just had a ball. I mean, just to be able to go anywhere. I took it on the Rubicon Trail, took it to places that it wasn't really supposed to go. There are many people and personalities in adventure motorcycling, but nowhere will you find someone more generous with their time and wisdom than this man right here. Kurt from Black Dog was kind enough to spend days with me building my bike out properly with Black Dog Cycle Works protective gear and Hepco Becker crash bars. On the Black Dog front, uh, how did you go from, the, I mean, both of you were corporate America. From my corporate job, I got laid off, then I got into contracting. That went along merrily for a couple of years, and Kurt started dabbling really in um, they made their first skid plate for the 950 Adventure KTM. Wayne, the fabricator, made one and thought this guy would go away. And he's like, I'll never he, see that guy I'll never again. Never see him again. <laughs> That's literally what he thought. <laughs> right. Oh shit. And that was you know how many years ago? Six, seven. Seven. Eight. And, that was eight years ago. And then he, you know, then he started making small batches. Well, then you know it just started to snowball and. The Super Enduro got a skip plate, and then, you know, just pro started adding products. But it was still relatively small and more what we would call hobby. I, and I was actually in mortgage finance, and you know what happened. And so I lost my job, along with, you know, all my friends who lost their jobs. Tens of thousands now, of other people. Now, Kurt looks at me and he says, well, I guess this we got to make a go of this. So Black Dog started through a tragic set of circumstances. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Where'd the name come from? Our, our black dog, Libby. 
Well, I hadn't been on an adventure yet, and my first one was going to be with Kurt. I wanted to make sure I had what it takes to be safe, be a good wingman, and show Kurt a good time at the same time. Well, we've come all the way to Arizona to do just that. Kurt met me at the campground bright and early. Look at you with the climb pop up. Like, I don't even have one of those. Dude, you didn't see my climb director's chair. Yeah. Come, come sit. Nice. <laughs> we've been talking a really good game. <laughs> we went to Rawhide. That was, that was awesome. We got a quarter mile of riding in About at Rawhide a mile together. Of riding. I got to see you go through the sand wash. I, went, I, I ate shit at the sand wash. I did not yeah. say that. And that sand wash was unforgiving. I mean, yeah. You, you're one of my motorcycle mentors, and it claimed you like the Bermuda Triangle. Only because Owen was in my way, and I could use his helmet as a ramp or dump it, and I like Owen. So I ate shit, fucked my knee up, and uh, yeah. So you left Black Dog in Sandpoint, Idaho, and went to Rawhide. Yep. We headed down to um, Baja. Actually, we were down there for about six weeks. Spent some time in Gonzaga Bay. It, it is one of my favorite places on the planet. It is absolutely epic. There's this huge bay. It's just an incredible place. I mean, to see the sunrise come up there is like nowhere I've ever been. I'd say 50 houses on the whole beach. And um, Alfonsina is, is, is kind of a legendary spot. You know, all the dirt bikers come in there and stay and um, food's good, beer's cold and amazing riding. And it's funny because people would go by and see the van and stop. And we saw customers and friends and- They didn't know you were there? No, oh, no. Yeah, they just saw the van as they were driving by and they'd stop in and- 10 days in Gonzaga Bay then where? We went south on the, on the really shitty road all the way to the highway. It's about 30 miles of dirt. Um, it typically claims a rim from every riding group. That's oh, how wow. rough it is. And I, last time I was down to my Super Enduro, I totally talked with my- my ram on the front. Stopped in uh, the Mulahe area, Posada, for about three or four days. Beautiful area there, I uh, really loved it. We hung out there for nine or 10 days. Got some riding in around that area. Um, Martha took the 1200 GS off-road kind of for the first time and uh, really did well. She, we, we hit some sandy shit for like 25 miles. And then the, the next day, I took the 1190, went all the way up the coast road and hit some really gnarly stuff. I mean, big rock climbs, boulders, um, just went on and on and on. Got a nice flat on my rear tire. Nail went through like the tube, like two places. And that road was just incredible, and the scenery and everything was just—it was epic. Um, had a really good ride. Definitely tested the skid plate that day. Went back to Mulahe area. Stayed there another week, which we expected to stay a day or two, and uh, we ended up staying a week. So, what do you want to do today? Uh, I think we should go do some riding. Tell me what we're going to see out there. We've got just epic trails right over across the highway here. And it just, there's sand washes. There's just cool two track. We can go up in the mountains where it gets a little more rugged. Um, yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in this area. It's just, I mean, it, which pick a direction. Well, know? I took the rawhide course intro to heavy bikes right. in hard places. Right. And I know that it was a difficult course because you got mortally wounded. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Then I took the Jimmy Lewis course, which was a lot like taking motorcycle training on board, like Neo from the Matrix. You wake up and you know Kung Fu. Right. Jimmy Lewis was just intense. So, so I'm stoked to. Cool. Uh, you're the rabbit. Let, let's let, follow you. Let's test some of these skills you just Go developed. Ride, yeah, sounds Go good, ride. man. Leaving the campsite, I was feeling pretty confident. The week-long adventure training that I had taken at Rawhide was no walk in the park. The training I got from Jimmy Lewis was like getting a master's degree in adventure motorcycling. Mother Nature, bring it on. Our plan was to ride a little bit in the morning and then meet his wife, Martha, who co-owns Black Dog Cycle Works. The challenge? We had to traverse the Arizona desert, hit some high points, down through some sand washes, and then across some really cool fire roads so that we could meet Martha for lunch. The question, would we survive?
that sucked. I didn't see that one coming. But then again, I never do. It's pretty well known that the tough, ever-changing Arizona landscape can chew up even the most extreme riders. I figure Kurt's one of the best riders out there, so I can learn a thing or two by riding with this guy. Ouch, Kurt. Okay, well, lesson learned. Even the best riders go down sometimes. When riding on sand, it's very counterintuitive. You want to get on that throttle and you want to stay on top of the sand so that that front tire can grip and steer. When riding in sand, whatever you do, don't stop. You're going to need that momentum to maintain control. Sand is not my friend. It grabs that front tire and tries to steer for you. There's a bunch of different techniques that I learned in my training, but man, if I could get them to work. I was spitting sand out of my mouth most of the afternoon. Now, Kurt is a master rider, but sometimes even the masters have to go back to their basic fundamental skills, like not burying the rear tire up to the axle. So sometimes you have to hop off the back, pop it in second gear, give it some gas, and pop the clutch. When I got back, I was washing sand out of places I didn't even know I had places. After what seems like hours of doing mortal combat with the sand wash, we're finally back on the road. We're thirsty, exhausted, and starving. The Arizona desert kicked my ass. How do you like that sand? Nice ride. <laughs> After traversing the Arizona desert all day, it's great to see some smiling faces. Martha, Kurt's wife, and co-owner of Black Dog Cycle Works, and of course the namesake of Black Dog, their black Labrador retriever, Libby. Kurt and Martha are a true success story. I grabbed a beer, threw the quadcopter in the air, and watched Kurt and Martha ride around a little bit as a couple. I'm watching Kurt and Martha, and watching them ride together is like poetry in motion. They've been at this for a while, and they've made it a lifestyle. Those guys have something I want. They ride the world for a living. They do this to the benefit of others. They ride around the world and it looks like a vacation, but what they're really doing, they're beating up their bikes to an extreme degree to find the points of failure, to find out where the bike is weak. It's no small task trying to find the failure of a $25,000 motorcycle. It takes a, a lot of riding, a lot of patience, a lot of understanding on the mechanics and ergonomics and engineering and design of these bikes. Kurt and Martha are geniuses. They exemplify the ma and pa shop. At the same time, they exemplify the adventure motorcycle culture. They both embrace adventure, they're both really good riders, and they're some of the kindest people you're ever gonna meet in this world. The beautiful thing about adventure riding, or motorcycling in general, are the people you meet along the way. Kurt and Martha are one of my favorites, not only in motorcycling, but of my friends. They've made the time to mentor me and show me the do's and don'ts about how to protect my bike and protect myself. For me, Kurt and Martha personify adventure motorcycling. They travel the world, they see amazing sights, they do it all on the back of two amazing motorcycles, and they take the benefit of their wisdom and research and they make the gear and parts to keep the bike safe. Again, if your bike's not healthy, you're not getting home. I can't underscore that or say that enough. This was just my first adventure with Kurt and Martha, and it's gonna be the first of many. Not only do I consider Kurt and Martha teachers, but I'm proud to consider them friends. I can't wait to return the favor, and I hope this video tells their story. This is the first adventure of the ride of my life. <laughs>